What's going on, y'all? So we're gonna do another clone narration. Uh, Bobby Hemmett. I decided it was time to do another clone variation. Guys, you know, it's so nice when a black man walks into an Indian restaurant and orders a couple of vegan dishes. Well, excuse me, vegetarian dishes because one, one had butter in it. And then tips him $5. They say, oh, he's not one of them. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not one of them. Do, do I look like one of them? I mean, seriously, guys. Seriously. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get to it, guys. Let's get to this uh, narration, see if we can come up with a few things. I got a lot of mo, y'all. I got a lot of mo. Peyton Powell was the really the real deal one that was the one that started the whole civil rights thing, but it was in a whole nother fashion than what it was. Now, even though he was a bit on the side of an aristocrat or whatever you want to call it you got to understand this part uh, or, or, or uh, that whole political thing you got to understand that um that's the vehicle that he chose but as brother juju said he had a lot of spiritual things that was dealing with him and going for him at a particular time just so happened that what we know now and we've heard about the history of they've always had the history of a, a, of a dualism going on when it came to the black leadership the black leadership ever since and it's funny we found out that and i just i never thought about this that we had the book of law that was established by the angel awas or the god awas in 1904 also the boule was established in 1904. now we also know that also that we know that Every time we had a, 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 a positive black revolutionary leader, we also had the white boys rendition of that positive black revolutionary leader. So, you know, you would have um, Du Bois and Marcus Garvey would be the one that's on the left and Du Bois would be on the right. And when I say right is, just put it this way, Marcus Garvey would be on the right because that's our right hand side and Du Bois would be on the left. You see what I'm saying? Because we got that whole Boule action and also the Niagara movement with Du, du Bois and that whole thing that went up with the NAACP as well as the whole boule thing. But we also now know that one thing happened based on the uh, the science of Ahmad Muhammad in 1931, which was also the key to the book of law is the, is the number 31, and three times 31 mm. is 93, and 93. There go that Greg Maddox number again, number 31. Same number I put on that winning ticket in Vegas. I told y'all Bobby Hemmett was the uh, one who was instrumental in bringing me to elijah muhammad um so you know the occult means hidden knowledge so you know bobby him and he he would be known as an occult teacher occult meaning just hidden knowledge not not worshiping the devil like some ignorant people would say okay you know i told y'all in the muslim folklore i would be considered a sufi which actually means woolly hair one uh Sufism is associated with occult occultism, uh, the esoteric side of Islam. But yeah, I just want to tell you, Bobby Hemmen was the one who was instrumental in bringing me to Elijah Muhammad. And 93 is also the number of AWAS as well as other, and also 418. We'll get into that later on for question and answers. But we also know that at that particular time in 1931, um, Masafar Muhammad, who was the pet project of the Sufis, came and visited Honorable Elijah Muhammad and also hooked him up. Mm -hmm. with the knowledge so as you see he said master fraud muhammad uh was the pet project of the sufis uh master fraud muhammad's father alfonso was the previous scientist or god uh before master uh, F uh master fraud muhammad <clears throat> and some of y'all already know the story of alfonso uh producing a child with the white woman to produce master fraud Muhammad so that he could sneak into the United States and then formed a uh, what was known as Nation of Islam. Okay, so uh, yeah, so master fraud Muhammad, God in person, uh, Sufi. The fourth grade education knowledge that in actuality in this particular time has now become more superior than the actual Afrocentric knowledge, and we'll get into that in a few minutes, but. We also know that um, 20 years to the day after 1931 would have to be 1951. In 1951, that uh, Malcolm X was, um, um, got out of jail. Now, we understand based on the numbers, and we also understand based on what is called the Dead Sea Scrolls. 
and the knowledge of the Dead Sea Scrolls, they also understood that the European knew that all of Elijah Muhammad was the Elijah that was prophesied to come to be the forerunner to the Christ. They knew it, and literally we know that even th through a particular congressional motorcade down the streets of Washington, D.C., for him when he went to speak before these congressional... And some, of the, and some of them knew that he was the exalted Christ. Okay, not that he was the forerunner. Some of them knew that he was the exalted Christ. Okay, so once again, you know, white man be knowing who is who, but, you know, most black people don't even know they ass from a hole in the ground. Whether they was a part of the nation of Islam or whatever. You got to, like I said, guys, you know, like that, like in the Christian canon. You know, uh, it says, blessed are those who are pure at heart, for they shall see God. And we looked up my name in Gematria, and it says that I found God. I see God. I know who the God is. And I don't give a damn if 99% of the population do not understand that. It doesn't make a difference to me, okay? Because as y'all see, I have the anointing. The proof is in the pudding, right? If I didn't have the anointing, then y'all could call me a clown. But since I do, if you come at me, you're only going to make yourself look foolish. That's why I'm so thankful for the anointing. But yeah, blessed are the uh, pure of heart, for they shall see God. Yep, and I know who the God is. People and doomed them all to hell. But they knew who he was, you see. But they understood that he was supposed to be a forerunner, but also they understood that 20 years down the road, that after the forerunner becomes Christ, so they were thinking that, Martin, that Malcolm X was the Christ, you see. And so therefore, they had started throwing World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War. All these wars were established after the Book of Law to somehow send people to the front line, black people to the front line, to kill the Christ. They said, well, we'll just put on these wars, and so therefore, we will somehow kill the Christ. That's why the, the Persian Gulf War was very key also, because 1991, they understood... Yeah, most of the wars that are uh, created has to do with uh, them having an ethnic cleansing. What is an ethnic cleansing? It's a cleansing, basically, in simple terms. It's a cleansing of the darker races of that nation. So when they went into Ser what was it Kosovo, when they went into Serbia, Serbia uh, Iraq, all the wars were basically an ethnic cleansing for them to kill the Christ. Based on the prophecies of um, what's that 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 white girl, the big prophecy woman um, Jean Dixon. That also, she said that the Antichrist would be around 30 in the year 1991, 1992. But by the by, but but by the the esoteric studies, the white boy knew that the Antichrist was their Antichrist was actually mm -hmm. our Christ. Right. So therefore, they had to start that war in 1991 also too. <clears throat> now this is the key. Based on that. They understood about the, 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 the numbers of Malcolm and Malcolm getting out in 51 and, uh, and, and, and was also in the nation before he got out. This was key why they had to groom their pet project to counter that. And that is the reason why they made Operation Martin Luther King as the... Yep, so whenever they come out with the real one, they got to come out with the fake one. And usually, usually it's always the, ma it's the masses that always get duped. That's why it's not good to be part of groups, you know. Um, I call him Martin Luther King, a.k.a. Don King, but we'll talk about that later. That would mean that Martin Luther King is actually still alive, if Don King really is MLK. Like I said, we'll talk about that later. Same voice and everything. Same gematria numbers. Same tone of speech when you, when you run a speech analysis. I got a, a picture of but me with Martin Luther King. I'll talk to y'all about that later. Fake leader to counter all of Elijah Muhammad's movements with they thought that this young person that put the nation of Islam on the map based on his oratory skills as, you know, uh, Malcolm X, based on Harlem and all that, they had to go to the South and fashion this particular black leader based on the black churches that the Illuminati and the government has had control over because they started this shit with the Freedmen's Bureau. So based on those black churches, they had to go in and they had to have a pet project. And so therefore, this is why they groomed Martin Luther King. 
based on the Niagara movement, based on um, the NAACP, based on all of this particular thing, the Jews and these particularly elite black people started the civil rights movement to always get this particular. Yeah, the uh, the so-called Jews, the Jew, the issues, they're the they're the ones who wrote the speech, the I had a dream speech. For Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King didn't write that. <laughs> Martin Luther King didn't didn't write the "I Had a Dream" speech. The Ish people wrote that for him. Black leader. So that particular black leader that they started in the civil rights movement was supposed to be the white man's rendition of the Christ because they thought that Malcolm was the Christ, and that is why it was crucial and they worked around the clock while it was also keeping the rest of the country out because they put Martin on TV. And keeping the rest of the country focused away from Malcolm X, they were setting up ways and working around the clock so they could kill Malcolm. You see, by giving you Martin Luther King. And that is why also to this day, most of the people in the 80s, most of the children that were born in the 60s, by the 80s, they didn't learn about Malcolm until the late 80s. They went through the 70s and most of the 80s and they didn't learn about Malcolm. So we I remember I went to go see Malcolm X, the movie that Spike Lee uh, uh, directed. Let's go see that movie. I think it was 1992. I was in seventh grade. And it was kind of interesting because I guess you could say that was my first uh, history lesson, his story lesson on the nation of Islam. So I'm 12 years old. I'm in seventh grade. We went on a field trip to see Malcolm X. And uh, when I left the movie theater, I saw Elijah Muhammad as the villain. <laughs> that just goes to show you the, uh, the programming. That can be in, uh, how somebody can be in, in, uh, indoctrinated. That's how a lot of people can't understand how did I end up with the knowledge that I ended up in, because I wasn't, you know, uh, uh, raised in a type of environment to uh, l uh, seek the knowledge of the things that I, you know, speak of now. That's why I, that's that's the number one reason you know I have an anointing because usually the t uh, the teaching that your parents or your grandparents give you. Uh, is the you know it's monkey see monkey do, but you know it, it just goes to show you you know my bloodline I'm different. You understand? Know you know they call it black sheep. You know I'm the chosen one. That's how you know I'm the chosen one. I didn't I didn't follow what everybody else was doing. You understand? But again, going back to that field trip to go see Malcolm X, when I left the uh, movie theater, <laughs> I thought Elijah Muhammad was the villain. You know, that's how they, that's how they wanted to make it seem. And uh, so I was still a long way from learning the truth. You know, um, you know, Malcolm having those great oratory skills, you know, and Elijah Muhammad just kind of being, you know, small and, you know, he had a strange kind of accent about him. Looked kind of funny, funny. Had he, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird the way they did it. You know, of course, and then that gruesome killing at, at the end with Malcolm X. You know, that was, oh man, I, I, I didn't like Elijah Muhammad at all after I went to go see Malcolm X at the movie theaters. Just now learning about Malcolm, you see, and they did this to keep it out of the area uh, uh, of the masses of black people, even though it was a mass movement. But the key is we understand the mass movement does not go down in history because we don't write history, so therefore not unless the TV predicts it, it doesn't go down. So that's why we understand why the United States government was also, uh, uh, as well as the Jews writing Mount, uh, Martin Luther King's speeches, as well as I Had a Dream speech. You see, and also in the book, um, in the book of the, the book, The Passover Plot, they give you a whole, even... Martin Luther King was, <clears throat> was uh, that dude was crazy, y'all. He wasn't nothing like they portrayed him. Uh, I think it was an incident where he was running around a, a, the, some hotel. He was running around uh, naked, you know, chasing a bunch of white girls. Martin Luther King was nothing like what they portrayed him to be, guys. I think, uh, what was it, Jackie Kennedy even tried to tell... <laughs> that's, the, that's the irony of, 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 of all the illusions, man, is that, you know... It, you know what, what what looks good is bad and, and what's bad is the good one you know because uh here's here's Jacqueline Kennedy a white woman and she's trying to tell you that Martin Luther King is the devil <laughs> and it's like okay well it's like man that's why it's so easy to be confused and delusional I mean you really have to 
you you really have to go inside yourself that's why it's so important i talk about all the time to not seek validation that's really the only way you can search for facts man because man i'm telling you if you seek validation just a little bit you already screwed if you're looking for one other person to agree with you you already screwed you have to search it out for yourself it is a path you walk alone just like death so you might as well you know you might as well but yeah martin luther king that was a filthy motherfucker man in the study of the dead sea scroll they understood it a bit that the 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 whole christ uh the, the priest messiah of elijah would go unnoticed by the masses of israel which israel just means black mm -hmm. people in the later days mm -hmm. so we understand that they've always used that to try to counter and as you notice now most of the people that you see anytime that they want to counter anything that they would call progressive as far as whether it be revolution on the monday or revolution in the spiritual level they always bring up martin luther king yep. as well as if you notice the counter with the whole thing about the tribe yeah they say um the Africans, they only know two things about black people as far as our history. Jesus and Martin Luther King. So everything that the African knows about us is totally counterfeit. That's all they know. That's all most black people know in America is Jesus and Martin Luther King. They don't know nothing else about nothing. With Chris Darden the next day after doggone Johnny Cochran rocked their behind, they had to bring up their fucking Martin Luther King bullshit. Because Martin Luther King is the man that they put in place to counter all particular revolutionary type of, of, of teachings that would that, that would you know liberate you to give you the Martin Luther King which Martin Luther King is probably the worst phenomenon to ever happen to black people but then again we also exactly. know that Martin Luther King was a messiah for white people you see was a right because Martin Luther King wanted us to hold hands with the white man and sing kumbaya man it's a lot of black people you can't even hold hands with and sing kumbaya you know what I'm saying he, uh, Martin Luther King was all about integration and like I told y'all and some of y'all already know it, integration is the worst thing ever happened to black people because before integration we had it was like we had a lot going on for ourselves you know businesses banks everything you know uh, but because black people decided to choose uh, you know uh, the left hand the left well that's why you see most black people in a condition that they are today you know because they uh, because God is angry with them and you only find a few people, very small few black people who uh, God has has saved for his own. Very small few. Uh, for white people. So they use this to counter uh, the certain type of element of, of um, the, the, the certain element of black liberation, as well as the new Messiah for them is they have come out that this whole... Uh, Lord betray in that will not work. So the new Messiah will be um, Colin Powell based on what they're trying to do. And if you get the man, Colin Powell, that can't be his real name. Seriously. Book the messianic legacy. It tells you that the Messiah, based on the um, dealing with the script of the Dead Sea Scroll, that the European has been going with his whole his whole uh, monarchy or his whole control system, whether his president as well as his kings was based on their following a pattern of what the messiah would do so your president is your messiah that's why black people got all crazy on election day when they got this clone up in there and i'm going ahead of myself and they elected um proud boy um bill clinton he is a messiah to most dog on most of the people who are not in consciousness and is not looking for the president to liberate themselves so yeah it's kind of interesting too because far as i know bill clinton was he was the he was the worst president black people ever had because he's the one who came in and, and uh, got rid of all the programs that we had going on for the young people. When he came in, he wiped all that out. It, it did do such a good job at painting someone as a friend of black people when they the total opposite. You know, they, they did the same thing with uh, y'all know who, you know. It's crazy, man. That's why, you, like I said, guys, it's like knowledge wisdom and understanding that is an individual uh quest that is not something that you can be looking for a group or look for people to validate you about you understand you got to be a trailblazer in this thing man or you just you're just not going to get it and and if you and if you're not a trailblazer you definitely not going to uh, please the most high he likes trailblazers people who ain't scared
<laughs> Let's go into some things. Also, you've noticed that they are, are dealing with this um, Dalai Lama. Now the Dalai Lama is supposed to be a spiritual man from Tibet. And now he's touring the United States. He's touring the United States. And anytime they put you on the media, now he, he goes on nightline. And what, what this Dalai Lama is touring, he's a clone. We'll go into the cloning in a few minutes. But what it is about him is he's working for the government. But it, so the government has now got him a spiritual person from Tibet. And so when Ted Koppel asked him, is this world in trouble? Now Ted Koppel knows enough to know that America is doomed. They asked the Dalai Lama, is this world in trouble? And the Dalai Lama said, well, based on what I see, America, America, even though there's a lot of bad things going on, he had to be, that's obvious. He said, even though there's a lot of bad, bad things, the world is getting better. Right there, you know that ain't no damn spiritual man. <laughs> to say that the doggone world is getting better. See, most people like to hear stuff like that because... <laughs> You know, people, uh, one thing about this, 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 this life that I know is people, they find comfort in being delusional. So if you have a man that comes out and say the world is getting better, you know, everybody can kind of jump on that bandwagon. And then you, if you say, no, it's not because I got 10 homeless people, you know, right outside my apartment, then everybody's booing you, boo, boo, you're a hater. You know, it's just, it's wild, man. People just, they, they like to be delusional. You see, you know that ain't no dog on spiritual man. Any fool knows that. In his scriptures, I don't give a damn what book he comes from. He knows that he's going against any book. I don't give a damn if it's Book of the Dead, Tibetan Book of the Dead, um, um, a Bottom of Gita, Upanishad, the Holy Bible, any of the books. You know in the latter days, it don't suppose to get any better. And we see, we, we can bear witness to that. So he's saying that it is getting better. So obviously this man has got to be a fake or a clone for the simple fact he hasn't looked at our situation. Mm -hmm. You see, to say that the world is getting better and we know that the world is actually going to global holocaust based on the crack of things. This is exactly what I need from, from honey. You see, so we know that it's not getting any better, but he's a clone. We're going to deal with a lot of that today because they're going to send you the Messiah through these clones. And we'll deal with that in a few minutes uh, when I go into the history of the clones. Now you got the brother saint named Solomon. Anybody know Solomon? Anybody ever went to see Solomon? Now Solomon now is done put up billboards in, in um, Chicago. Go putting up billboards in dog on Chicago saying that he's all off. Now how is it? Now this is what get me. How is it you, you're going along your path, you read, you study, and a man blows into town overnight, last summer, announce he's all out in two lectures and get a hundred people from Atlanta to follow him. You see what I'm saying? Now he's putting up big billboards in, in Atlanta, in Chicago, saying he was all off, as well as told the people that he was stripped naked in Wrigley Field and let the white people just <laughs> at him just to show that he's all off. And people oh, are man. See what I'm saying? Now, what happens is based on the ego. What happens, that, and that just goes to show you people, uh, they don't want to do what's right. They want to do what feels right. It's all about feelings and emotions. You know, people are very sensitive out here. You see, if somebody makes them feel good, they're going to follow that person. It, it, we don't damn whether it's the truth or not. That It makes me feel good. Happens is a lot of people, um, they can't take the knowledge and also the power that goes with knowledge. So therefore, they start going a little crazy. You see, so... That's why they say the truth hurts. But guys, we're going to stop right here and we're going to do a part. <laughs> that got me stripped naked in Wrigley Field. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. They should have they should have made him. Uh, uh, they should have made him prove that one. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to leave this uh, particular video of Bobby in the link, y'all. And uh, I'm trying to think, do I want to leave anything else in the link? Um, I, I might leave a uh, Elijah Muhammad link. Um, when it when it was questioning him at the what uh, what happened to Malcolm. Uh, so anyway, guys, yeah, I'm gonna do a part two to this. I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Got some things to do, and I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.